NADN 2.0 is launching soon and I have been testing the release for you. So let me just cut through the hype and tell you what actually matters and what you need to know whether you are building automations for clients or running them for your own business. First, let's just set some expectations. This is not a revolutionary overhaul. Your existing workflows, they will mostly work the same way. The core functionality, it has not changed and it will not change, but there are a few specific improvements worth knowing about. So let's go ahead and start breaking them down. Now the UI redesign, this is the most obvious change. It's just visual. So NN 2.0, it has a flatter, more modern design. The nodes, they look cleaner. The sidebar, it's reorganized. And there are new loading animations when nodes actually execute. It's definitely more polished than version one, but does this matter? Well, for your day-to-day -day work, yeah, I mean, <laughs> a little bit, I guess, but the reorganized sidebar, it just makes it a little bit faster to access your workflows, your executions, and your settings. So when you're building or debugging any complex automations, those small efficiency gains, they do add up, I suppose, but the loading animations to also make it clear what is actually happening in real time, which it is helpful when you're troubleshooting or demoing a particular workflow. But let's just be clear, this is a quality of life improvement, not a capability upgrade. You're not suddenly able to build things that you couldn't build before. Okay, now here is the actual function improvement that matters for you. In version one, when you executed a sub workflow, whatever data that you passed into it, it comes back out unchanged. So if you send in status pending, you get back status pending, even if the sub workflow changed things internally. But in version two, the sub workflow now returns its own execution data back to your parent workflow. So here's an example. Let's say you're building a lead qualification system. Your main workflow, it receives a new lead, then executes a sub workflow that enriches the data, scores the lead, and determines if they're qualified or not. Now in V1, your main workflow, it wouldn't automatically get that enrichment data or the qualification score back you'd have to set up your own methods to pass that information back, whether that's writing to a database that both workflows access using webhooks or other patterns. Now in Veeds 2, the sub workflow can now just return that enriched data and the qualification score directly. So your main workflow, it receives it and it can immediately route that lead to sales if they're qualified or to nurturing if they're not. It's just a cleaner architecture for workflows that needs to hand off processing to any sub workflows and then use the results. So this doesn't unlock anything that was impossible before because you could always build these workflows with weight nodes or webhooks or shared data sources or whatever. What this does is just gives you more architectural flexibility. So for complex multi-step workflows where you want to modularize your logic into sub workflows, this makes the data flow significantly cleaner. If you're mostly building straightforward automations, you probably won't need this. But if you're building sophisticated systems with multiple processing stages, this is a real improvement. Next up, there is now a native Python code tool built directly into NADN. Previously, running Python required some external setup or just using the function node, which did have its limitations, but now it is integrated. So this is useful if you need to do any complex data analysis or mathematical calculations or operations that NADN standard nodes don't do or handle too well. But let's be honest, most automations they don't exactly need Python. Most of what we're doing is just connecting APIs or moving data between systems and triggering actions based on conditions. So the existing nodes handle that pretty much just fine. So think of Python support as expanding what is actually possible, not as something that you will use constantly. It's just there when you need it for specific edge cases. Now really quick, I just wanna mention that if you want to connect with other people building automations and get direct answers to technical questions, like should I use this Python node or stick with standard nodes, join my free school community. We have over 16,000 members now who actually use this stuff in production. Link is in the description and it is completely free for you to join. Now here's some breaking changes that you need to know about. So if you have any existing workflows, make sure to pay attention. Now the main breaking change involves workflows with error triggers and execution workflow triggers. So these now activate in situations where they wouldn't have in version one. So what you need to do when you upgrade, test your workflows, especially if you are using any error handling or execution triggers. Now most workflows, they will be fine, but it's worth checking just to make sure nothing behaves unexpectedly. So here's the bottom line. 2.0, it is a solid incremental update. The UI is better. The sub workflow improvement is legitimately useful for complex automations and the security enhancements, they are good to have. And native Python, it expands your operations for any edge cases. But your fundamental approach to building any AI automations or just automations in general, it doesn't change. 
The problems that you're solving, it does not change. The value that you are delivering also doesn't change. So when the official release drops, here's what you should do. First, just upgrade your N8N N instance, test your existing workflows to make sure nothing has broke, read through the release notes to see if any of the new features solve the problems that you currently have. If yes, use them. If no, just keep building what you're already building. You do not need to spend weeks trying to learn every new feature just because it exists. Use the features that solve actual problems that you are facing. Now, for those of you who do run an AI automation, if you're building automations for clients, here's what matters. The sub workflow improvement, it makes it easier to build sophisticated approval systems. The security enhancements, it gives you better answers when clients actually ask about data protection. And the Python support, it expands what is technically possible. While your clients, they don't give a shit about what version of any you're using, they care whether you can solve their expensive problems. So use these improvements where they are relevant, but don't get distracted by shiny new features that do not impact client outcomes. And with that being said, if you are struggling to land high ticket clients or you're just struggling building low value automations, I'm opening a few spots in my mentorship program. This is one-on-one -on -one where we help people build six figure automation agencies just from complete scratch. If you guys do want more information on that, then check out the link down below in the description if you are interested. Now for business owners, if you're using any to automate your own operations, the upgrade, it's pretty straightforward. You'll get a cleaner interface, better security, and the ability to actually build more complex workflows if you need them. And the learning curve, it's pretty minimal because the core platform, again, it hasn't changed. The main thing to just watch out for is those breaking changes with the error triggers. So test your mission critical workflows after upgrading to just make sure that they still behave as expected. Now, just my final thoughts, 2.0, it's a good update. It's not revolutionary and it shouldn't fundamentally change how you actually work but it is more polished, more secure, and adds some useful capabilities for specific use cases. So upgrade when it's released, test your stuff, and keep building. That's the whole story. If you guys found this helpful at all, subscribe to the channel. I put out content like this every single week on AI automation, whether that's building agencies and actually making money or helping businesses increase their bottom line with AI. And if you're just getting started with an AI automation agency or looking to land your first few clients, I'm running our three-day AI agency challenge where we will help you build your first live automation, set up your positioning, and get ready to have real conversations with prospects. It's practical, it's hands-on, and it is very cheap for the time being. Link is down below in the description if you want to check it out. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.